I believe uh, Good Friday is probably the greatest day to set aside in history. Yeah. That's when Jesus actually paid the utmost price for you and I. Amen. Sure, he rose again. That's a great day. Christmas is a good, great day. But something about this day has always touched my heart. 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 29. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he had be, was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup and he had, that he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. This particular text is pretty strong language. Mm -hmm. Some people have taken it in various ways, but how many here remember when they were saved, the day they were saved? That is the most important thing to remember in your life. When you actually made a commitment with the Lord, and he came down and honored that promise that you gave him and saved us. Amen. That's a day we should talk about in our testimonies. If nothing else, that's one thing we should say over and over. You know, I, if we didn't have birthdays throughout the year, I'd probably forget how old I was. It's the birthday that kind of sets me back. Let's see, how old was I last year? Now I'm this, you know. It, we remember these things. And that's why we should talk about them. Because we do forget. I have at times had very vivid dreams. And it was several years ago. I was dreaming about the crucifixion of Jesus. And I think it was during the Holy Week. Maybe it was on Friday. I don't remember exactly what day it was. But I was actually standing with the crowd in my dream that was yelling at the cross and Jesus hanging up there saying, come down from the cross if you be the son of God, do a miracle for us. And they were going on and yelling and screaming. And then Jesus died in my dream. And it was about that time that I woke up in literal cold sweat. You see, it, it was such an impact. What if, if he would call thousands of angels and they would have come taken him back to his father because we weren't worth it right. certainly what he was seeing around him he was dying for these people mm -hmm. he was dying for us and we were saying I want to live the way I want to live we are all encouraged to examine ourselves at this very sacred and special time a lot of people don't know exactly what that is so we're going to make it very clear tonight we do not, do not want to take the ordinance unworthily. This verse also commands us to eat the bread and drink the cup. So first it warns us not to take it if we're unworthily, but then it commands that we take it. So we've got to do one or the other. Let us see the importance of doing the right thing. The Passover meal, similar to the Seder meal Jewish people observe today, was to remember and celebrate the deliverance from Egypt. But Jesus here applied it to himself and what he was about to do in dying on the cross for our sins. So it did away with the, the old Passover and started something new. Back in 2000 when I was in Israel, I spoke with some of the Jewish rabbis and teachers there. I was very interested in what their thoughts were on various subjects, but I realized more than before how some of the Hebrew people 
have understood examples given, in some cases, much more than we do. When Jesus used examples for uh, illustrations, using their culture and, and their life as Bedouins and fishermen. He used these examples, and they could picture in their mind. I remember when we were there, and they took us to the place where they believed Jesus told them about the soils, the four soils. And as he, he, he was standing looking at us, and we were looking at him as a group, and down over the valley we could see all four soils. A road was zigzagging back up, the hard soil, the well taken care of soil, the rocky soil. We could see it all. So the image that we were getting, what Jesus often used, was pictures. It was, you know, I, I, a lot of times I remember pictures of what people are illustrating better than the words. I don't remember what a person said maybe, but I remember the illustration. I remember in Sunday school, I remember very vivid object lessons on big velvet. They have these two ways and so forth, and they go into it. I never forgot that. I haven't got a clue what a lot of the other lessons were, but I could tell you the object lessons. And so it's important for us to remember these things. Don't forget. In the text, the disciples must have been astonished when Jesus changed the tradition, traditional Passover and passed a cup with a new meaning. Matthew 26, 27, it says, And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. There are times when I'm passing the emblems. <laughs> I think I've told you this before, but someone will drink just a little bit of it and put the cup back in, and I can't tell whether it's been used or not. And I feel like saying, Drink ye all of it, you know. That would be easy for me. I notice some ministers, they stack them so they don't make a mistake like that. But nevertheless, it, it's... Uh, <laughs> Jesus is telling us to drink all of it. Of course, the meaning of this full commitment and full consecration. That's what it's really saying. Do it all. Give it all to God. This cup... Jesus offered may have reminded the disciples of the Jewish wedding. This can help us understand one of the important reasons of examining ourselves. When the young man finished, uh, wished to marry a, a Jewish maiden, he and his father would speak to the parents of the young lady that he wanted to marry. And when it was agreed upon, the young man would hand the chalice or cup to the young maiden, telling her that if she would marry him, he would promise to cherish, protect, and provide for her until death separate them. Very similar to uh, what we say in our vows in marriage. Now, this was like when Jesus pleads with us through his spirit to give our lives to him. He promised to protect, heal, save, cherish, and give us a home that he is going to prepare for us. The young lady had a chance of this time to take the chalice and drink it or say no. She wasn't forced to marry this guy. But when she said no and didn't take the cup, it caused great disappointment to the young man. We can all remember the love of God showed to us and saving us from our sins. I remember specifically when I was five years old. That was a long time ago. 71 years. But I remember that was a major incident in my life. And maybe nobody else even knew what was going on. I remember walking down, a little boy, and kneeling down at the altar in Portland, Oregon. And when the Lord saved me, I went home and told my parents. Mom told me Wednesday that I'd gotten saved because it was a remarkable difference. Mm -hmm. But Jesus wept when Jerusalem would not heed his pleading. He wants us to give our life to him. Yeah. That's a major point in our life. We should never forget it. Amen. We should never forget 
the consecration we made to the Lord. If the Jewish maiden took the cup, she would be promising to be faithful to him and to him alone, to cherish, comfort, take on his family name, and whatever he or wherever he would go, she would go. At this point, there was a covenant or vow made between them and the family. Like when we were saved, there was a covenant made between God and us. We made that covenant together. After this, the young man would leave his father's house and prepare, uh, go home and to his parents' house, usually it was in the property of his parents, and begin to prepare a place. And usually they say it was about a year. They didn't have all the machinery and heavy stuff that we have today, but they'd build a nice house for the family, for the new couple getting married and for their children. And then, while he was, while he was preparing at the bride to be, was home preparing her wedding gown and her, her trousseau, I guess that's the same thing, to have everything just right when the groom would come to her father's house. The groom would come with an entourage blowing trumpets and calling with his bride to come out to the wedding feast. Now when we examine ourselves, we should look back when we gave our lives to Jesus Christ. Are you sure still committed as you were when you were first saved? Do you remember what that promise was? That was like a betrothal vow. And it was like we accepted that the chalice, or cup, we would serve him and be faithful. Now, we need to examine ourselves ongoing. It's good if we do that every day, actually. This evening, as we take the cup, we can ask ourselves, are we still faithfully keeping that covenant with Jesus that we had when Jesus accepted the commitment to him? Has it begun to slip in any way? That's why we need to remember these. We give testimonies. You know what happens? I don't know what I'm going to say when I stand up. You stand up and your mind starts spinning and you say something. You may even say something you hadn't thought about for some time. It activates somewhere. We need to remind ourselves what the Lord has done. It's a good time to consecrate and to renew our commitment tonight. If by any chance sin has entered in, you can be restored this evening. You can go back and start over again, but you can do it tonight. Remember, the commandment is to take it. It's well to don't drink it unworthily. Get right with the God and then take the ordinance. We are going to our knees in prayer. And the ministers will be praying over the fruit of the vine and the bread the way we've done it for years. The only change was when I was growing up, we had actual chalices, a big one. We'd drink out of the same cup. Well, that kind of went by the wayside for sanitation purposes, I guess. There's a few churches that still do that. But uh, taking these emblems can be a beautiful time. Filled with much love, appreciation, and great joy. During this time, experiences take place. My wife and I have a eight and a half by 11 promise sheet, which I have printed for everybody I've married, every couple I've married, of commitments for them to go over. And God's involved in it too. It has their picture on it, it has a little heart on one side and so forth, but it's good. I encourage them to go over that every anniversary day. Renew it. Make sure, are we still as much in love as we were on that wedding day? That's what good God's talking about. We're not talking about committing sin necessarily in this pit. We are in one sense, but it doesn't mean you have to start all over again every time ordinance service comes. It means it's a reminder God reminds us 
Are we still as committed? Reevaluate your life. Consecrate like you did that other time. Ordinance service is one of the times we remember and review and examine ourselves, making sure that we are just as committed as we were when we were first saved. It helps us stay alert for Jesus' return and takes us to the great marriage supper of the Lamb following the rapture. It's all going to happen. We want to make sure we can hear that trumpet up there. I was just looking at the audience here. There's one day I don't want to be in this church. And that's the Sunday after the Lord returns. This is going to be an empty place. I believe most of us here, if not all of us, have been saved. Are ready for the coming of the Lord. If not, the Bible says, get ready and enjoy the fellowship with Jesus Christ in this blessed time. An experience we should never forget. So we're going to, uh, ministers are going to come down and pray for the emblems, and, and you can all go to your knees. I'll let him explain that maybe, but uh, remember what I said. Examine yourself. It's not a crisis time. It's pulling back the memories that maybe you've set aside and unthought about for a long time. That's positive. That's why we gather together. The more as you see that day approaching, encourages us, draws us close, reminds us. I'm a great forgetter. I find that out when I can't find my keys and don't know where I put this or that, but also in various things through life. So we'll have uh, Brother Pete explain what's happening.